So the other day on stream, someone asked me, Truth, what do you think is the five best TURs in the game, not including any EZA units? And I started thinking about it, and I was like, holy shit, that's a good idea for a video. So that's what we're doing here today. Now, I did decide to blow this out to 10. Uh, so basically, what we're going to be looking at is the top 10 uh, TURs in Dokkan. I am not including TURs that Dokkan Awaken into LRs, of course, because then <laughs> some of those TURs from LRs will probably sneak onto the list, and that would, you know, muddy things up. So the number one thing I want to start this out with is by saying this list, for me, is very, very, uh, like, opinion-based. So don't get too mad if you don't like the spots I have some of these units. I'm using kind of weird criteria for how I'm ordering them. For me, like the number of usable teams a unit is on and how well a unit meshes on those teams heavily factors in for me, like the order of these units. So I don't know if this is really like top 10 best TURs or my top 10 favorite TURs or my top 10 most usable TURs, some combination of that. Uh, now we're going to be looking at all units that have Fierce Battle and our TURs, there are no Shattering Limit units that qualify for this list as a TUR uh, that aren't easy aid, right? Like, maybe, now, nah, even, like, the Family Kamehameha Trio, uh, which does have Shattering Limit, would not, like, jump in above any of these Dokkan Fest beasts that I have right here in the top 10. So, let's go ahead and jump in and go through this list. Again, going through basically Fierce Battle to URs. Uh, what do I feel like is the top 10? So, we start out with the brand new Android 17. Now, one, this guy is a, the leader of the Android category, which is a monster team. Two, he has a secondary leader skill, which could be useful in Dokkan Battlefield, Super Battle Road, uh, you know, Extreme Z-Awakening. There's probably several different places where that could be very useful. I, I also do want to add in that... I'm not really looking at things in terms of like, oh, this unit does the most damage, so he's one. Like, that's not how I'm doing things here. Because the fact of the matter is, most people care more about beating something like Super Battle Road than some random fucking Dokkan event. So, defense does matter in today's meta. Like, you know, a year ago, people would say, oh, all that matters is damage. Damage, damage, damage. You know, every event is easy as piss. You just run right through it, so it doesn't matter at all, you know, if they have any defensive value at all. Uh, so I, 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 don't, I don't really think uh, that way, and I'm not really doing that for this list. Uh, now, 17 lowers attack and defense on a super attack. I'm not, that's kind of a worthless ability for the most part. Many of the toughest bosses are immune to it. But then again, you know, uh, Extreme Z Awakening and Super Battle Road, most of the enemies are immune to this. But lowering attack and defense could be good for Super Battle Road, of course. Uh, and then 17, 120% attack buff when performing a super attack, which is good. Then he gives all allies 3 key and 60% defense, which is very good. And he reduces damage by 40% when your HP is 77% or below, which is also very good. But what does hurt 17, I think, are his links. Android Assault, Twin Tears, Infinite Energy, Rival Duo are links you're never going to activate. Like, ever. Only, like, Rival Duo with Android 16 on the Android team. That's it. They're just completely dead links. So, 17 is basically left with Shocking Speed... Turn out a power and fierce battle. Only one attack link, fierce battle, which does hold him back a tiny bit. Not really so bad, but just enough that he's 10th on the list. He is also a mega, mega top tier option on both the Android and Universal Survival Arc team. Uh, this team in particular, Universal Survival Arc, you know, if the LR Goku and Frieza is really dropping soon, uh, like the rumors say, uh, this guy's going to be even better on that team with that three keyed allies. So now we'll move on to number nine is the physical Super Vegito. Now, or I feel like a lot of people will probably be upset with me having this guy so far down the list, but there are several issues I have with him. One, his category. The Majin Buu category is a mess. A lot of it has to do with physical Vegito here. Him only really having a uh, fierce battle, or excuse me, uh, prepare for battle. And I guess he does have Fuse Fighter too, which would be good for like Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks. But it, the team is is a mess with key links, right? 
So it's not really the most fun team to run. Matter of fact, I would say it's one of the least run teams of a lot of these category teams, right? Like, like the Majin Buu arc has, like, real strong units on it, and I, I don't feel like people run it that much. It's just not fun. Like, it needs a different leader is what it needs. Uh, we look at his uh, super attack. He does immense, raises allies attack by 30% for one turn. Not the biggest attack buff. It's not a true 30% attack buff, but it is nice. He reduces damage from normals by 50%, which is good. But I much prefer what AGL Super Vegito does, uh, reducing damage by, what, 80%, I believe, AGL Super Vegito does. That's much more useful uh, in stuff like Super Battle Road. So, like, for example, uh, global players, you know, I would recommend using the AGL Super Vegito on the Patara team for the Patara Super Battle Road stage than I would the physical Super Vegito, because that extra 30% is a huge, huge deal because some of those enemies in there hit very, very hard. Uh, he is a counter unit, and he does build up his attack uh, 10%, you know, all the way up to 100%. Really, the main reason I'm penalizing this guy, like, his potential, he has the potential to be the number one unit. Some people may have this guy number one on their list of top 10 TURs, but his usable categories, I don't know what it is. I don't really enjoy using him on the Patara team or the Busaga team. So, that might just be me. Uh, and then also, his links are kind of wonky. Like, them getting rid of Shocking Speed uh, ended up hurting this guy a lot more than I thought it would. Uh, a very good unit, but I'm not as high on him as others are. But of course, you know, Vegito units are very impressive still. Uh, moving on to the next unit. This is number 8. Uh, this is Tech Super Saiyan Blue Vegito. Now... Many people will probably consider this like the best unit in the game. For me, it just never works out this way. What I have a rainbow uh, attack blue Vegito. He will super attack once, then he'll do a normal, then he'll do a normal, and then it's someone else's turn. Uh, if he's going to do that for you, he's not the best unit in the game, especially with how his links don't really work on a lot of his teams. Starting with his leader skill, I'd say his leader skill is... Almost fodder at this point. I, I don't really particularly like the super type team, mainly because of this guy. Uh, it you know The team has to be built around over in a flash to sustain with him. I never really felt that that super type team, it, it just doesn't feel as strong compared to a lot of the category teams to me. Uh, the fact that he raises attack and defense like a permanent stack is very, very good on his super attack. Nowadays, moving forward, what you want on a unit is this. Raises attack and defense. No wor No longer. We don't want units to lower attack or even stun or seal. None of that. Raising a unit's own attack and defense, that's the best thing moving forward because an enemy can't be immune to you, your own unit, powering itself up, right? So I love that about him. And then as passive, he has a great chance to launch two additionals, each of which has a medium chance, which is a 25% chance. To become a super attack, and then it gets a 15% attack buff, which each attack up to 150%. And then I'm pretty sure the buff is 20% from the super attack. Yeah, it is. Okay. Uh, and then it's links. What hurts him is that he's only got over in a flash. If the, I, I'm not lying, if this guy had prepare for battle, I would probably jump him up to one. Like, just him having prepare for battle completely would change everything because. Where he fits on these teams. Realm of Gods, he is a monster and a perfect fit. But the Batara team and the future team, he just doesn't work. Because he's the only over and a flash unit there. And it just drags the whole team down around him. Like, the optimal Patara team has Super Saiyan 3 Bardock uh, and uh, Int Gogeta. Just because they're Super Int units from LR Super Vegito's leader skill. So, like, that should show you that this guy, he doesn't really work that well on the Patara team. Yes, he is, like, the highest DPS TUR in the game, but there are drawbacks to him. But, one thing not to forget about, he does have that behemoth 160% 12 key multiplier, which is very nice as well. Uh, moving on, we have uh, the SCR Rose Goku Black. Now, unlike the super type team, which is very, very wonky, the villain team is very good because Rose is a support type unit, giving extreme type allies three key and 50% defense. 
He has a 120% attack buff as well. He also has that 160% 12 key multiplier. Uh, he does lower super type enemies attack and defense minus 20%. Which is pretty much worthless in all modes except for Super Battle Road, where it is very helpful. Uh, he does raise Extreme Type Allies attack by 30% for one turn. Uh, that's not really too big of a deal. Uh, this guy probably would work best as floaters on the team anyway. So, you know, in order for this to really be uh, effective and helpful, he would probably need to be in, like, the first slot. Uh, I do think... Again, the extreme team is a lot better than the super type team, so his leader skill is actually very viable. And then, I mean, Rose units have some of the best links in the game. Uh, very, very good across the board. And then category, Realm of Gods, he's very good. He's very good on the Pitara team and very good on the future team. I don't really have any complaints or any drawbacks about Rose, and as such, there's not even really a lot to talk about with him. So there we go. Uh, so I'm already lost. So it's a 10, 9, 8. This was 7. Moving on to 6, we have Tech Ultra Full Power Super Saiyan 4 Goku. They still have not called this Ultra Full Power Super Saiyan 4 Goku. It's gotta be Ultra Full Power Super Saiyan 4, damn it. I hate that it's just Ultra Full Power Saiyan, but whatever, whatever. Uh... I would say this Goku, his team is a little bit lackluster for now. You know, we'll see what happens once they add some more units. Uh, he does immense and greatly lower his defense. The lower his defense isn't the greatest, but his passive is better than people think. Like, he has a 100% attack buff right off the bat, and then he has a attack and defensive buff by up to 70%, depending on how much HP you have remaining. Uh, so this does lead to this Goku being not only quite damaging, but also quite tanky. He has a very good link set as well. Uh, 12 can multiply 150%. And he's very, very good on all three of his category teams. Like, a top tier option. Like, the Shadow Dragon Arc team, you basically go Omega and then this guy. The full power team, he's the leader, you gotta use him. And the pure Saiyan team, you know, with the other Super Saiyan 4s on there, you know, like, if you're global, right? If you're a global player, chances are you've got Super Saiyan 4 Goku, you've got Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta. You could put this fucker on the pure Saiyan team, you've got the three Super Saiyan 4s on the team, the team is gonna work really well, this guy is gonna work really well. I am a big fan of this unit. He, this guy has a big negative stigma around him, because... He wasn't like a dramatic upgrade over SCR Super Saiyan 4 Goku, but that is irrelevant because you could use them both at the same time. It's not an either-or situation. You could use them both. So I got no problem with him whatsoever. Uh, that pretty much does it for him, though. Uh, moving on. Next, we're on number five. This is Turles. Uh Turles is the best support type unit in the game. Done. Boom. That's really all I got to say about him. He is phenomenal. He himself is usually not going to do the most damage, but his support type passive is so good. He does have a big negative in that his transformation is not the best. The reason I say this is, like, it's fine, you know, 100 defense, 130%, or attack and defense, 130%, recover 15% HP, which is cool. But usually when you're running this guy, you're thinking that he's going to be a support type unit. So when he transforms and loses that support type passive and just becomes a generic, you know, hard-hitting and tanking unit, uh, he loses a lot of what makes him unique, right, as the best support type unit. That's just all allies. It doesn't matter if they're super, extreme, AGL, tech, and none of that matters. He'll give the buffs to all units. Um, the low-class warrior is a, a fodder. It's not like a real category. Like, if we just quickly glance at it, like, there's no, like, true leader. You know, they got major buffs with this Surlis and this LR Bardock being added, but it's, it's not, like, a real team yet. You know, they would need a real leader before we'd even consider that. So he's basically got two teams, Movie Bosses and Pure Saiyan, but I consider the Movie Boss team to be top three, along with maybe the Android category and probably Pure Saiyan. Like, those are my three favorite teams, uh, three teams that work very seamlessly. So that makes me... Uh, look a lot more fondly at Turles. And of course, he's amazing on the Pure Saiyan team. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I actually think Turles is the ideal leader for the World Tournament. So that makes me give him extra bonus points. Like, that's one reason I have him above Rosé. Because uh, with Rosé, 
you have to have all extreme type characters of every typing, right? But with this Turles, you could just rock a team of Turles, LR Cell, LR Broly, let's say the in free to play Raditz, Jacko, Chaozu, boom, you're off to the races. The 50% buff from his leader skill is enough for LR Cell and the free to play Raditz, I believe. So it is more than good to go, and you're going to be absolutely fine. The reason the 50% buff for those who will be good, by the way, is because I think the World Tournament team still is built around Broly. It's just nowadays, even my Rainbow LR Broly. Both of his super attacks is not enough to kill some enemies nowadays. Uh, and that's with the 150% buff. Because remember, LR Broly is a movie boss category unit. So really, when I'm talking about Raditz or LR Cell, I'm thinking of them as kind of cleanup units. They will attack after LR Broly. Uh, Alright, so moving on to the number 4 units. We have Evolution Blue Vegeta. Now, there's not a lot for me to say about this guy. So I'll, I'll keep it brief. It's just... He's not like a, a shining diamond of a unit. He's just very consistent, and he just gets it done. Like, he hits hard, and then he also has good defense. Like, boom, that's it. And his links, I would say, aren't really the greatest. Like, because he's only just got prepared for battle. So, like, no over and a flash, no shocking speed. But I find that this guy, like, he works so good in all of his category teams. Universe Survival Arc team. He's perfect because he's got that turn of power link anyway, so that team links perfectly. Realm of Gods team, he's an optimal unit, and he works so well on there. Oh, so many of those units have, you know, Warrior Gods, Fierce Battle, UI Goku's got turn of power, Prepare for Battle, Super Saiyan. So he works really well on there. The Pure Saiyan team, he is the leader of, I would say, is the most free-to-play friendly category in the game, being the largest category in the game, and one of the most fun categories in the game. Just look at this roster of units you've got. These powerful LRs, a lot of these powerful TUIs, you got Turles, Blue Vegeta, Super Saiyan 4 Goku, both of them, Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta, Mass Saiyan, UI Goku, Super Saiyan 3 Bardock, all the God Gokus, so many options, that team is absolutely incredible, and the full power team, he's also a really good option as well, 150% 12 key multiplier, and a lot of times I don't really, like transformations aren't that common, but for Blue Vegeta, he does seem to transform all the time. Now, his transformation condition is he just has a 30% chance starting from the fourth turn of the fight. In my experience, this activates all the time. When you run a pure Saiyan team, you have two of these guys on the team. It seems like on that fourth team or on that fourth turn, one of them always transforms. And when he becomes the, the evolution form, attack and defense 130%. He launches two additionals, both of these do. Uh, very consistent damage, by the way, but they don't, they can't be super attacks. They're only just normals. And then this one, he gets an additional 10% chance to land a crit with every attack performed up to a max of 70%. So you get one or two turns with Evolution Blue Vegeta in, and he's going to be critting every single attack. This Vegeta raises his defense with his uh, attacks. Both of them, very, very good units. All right, so moving on to the top three. The top three for me is, well, okay. <laughs> two and three are very, very close. Well, the mouse is already revealing who three is, but two and three for me are very, very close. Neck and neck. People are going to be pissed at me for who number one is, but I don't care. <laughs> He's my number one. So number three, I got Ultra Instinct Goku here. Ultra Instinct Goku, I feel like he doesn't jump off the page. But, like, when you really look at him, he gets everything done. He has a great team, the Realm of Gods team. He raises his attack permanently throughout battle, which, again, like I was when I was talking about Tech Vegeta Blue, that's exactly what you want. Beautiful. Uh, attack and defense 100%, so he hits hard and defends well. He can transform an Ultra Instinct Goku when health falls below 50%. Not a very difficult uh, condition to get happen. And from there, his attack goes up to 150%. And he's got a 70% chance of dodging. So that's very, very good. Still raises attack when he transforms. So he's very powerful there. Uh, and then he has one of the best link sets in the game. Kamehameha, prepare for battle. Over in a flash, godly power. Turn on a power, first wake and fierce battle. And he is a mega top tier option on Universe Survival Arc team and the Pure Saiyan team. Of course, Realm of Gods, you have... Like, there isn't even a secondary Realm of Gods leader, correct? Only Ultra Instant Goku is even the leader of this team. So in order to run this team, you have to have 
Ultra, and Sengoku. Just a really good unit. Now, I did decide to put Super Saiyan 3 Bardock above him slightly. Only because Super Saiyan 3 Bardock does have the Super Saiyan link. Now, I know I just sucked off Ultra and Saint Goku's links, right? But even though his links are, like, perfect, the Super Saiyan link is just the most common link in the game. One, Both of these guys, they're very similar. They both have that 100% to attack and defense. Bardock gets it when performing a super attack. <clears throat> so he'll hit a little harder than Ultra and Saint Goku because of that. But at the same time, if you're putting these units in the first slot... Ultra and Sengoku already has his defense. Bardock doesn't get defense until he attacks. So he has to actually attack for him to get his defense. So if you put Bardock in the first slot and he gets hit before he attacks, uh, he's not going to have that 100% defensive buff there, which will hurt him. Uh, he does have that 40% attack buff when HP is 70% or below, which is just absolute madness. That adds so much extra damage to the team. He actually has a medium chance to seal on super attack. I would say for the most part, this is largely pointless. But, you know, for something like Super Battle Road, it could be interesting. Uh, Extreme Z-Waken and Dokkan Battlefield. Uh, most of those bosses are immune to all that shit anyway. And you're not going to need it in a normal Dokkan event either. So, this is mainly just here for uh, the uh, Super Battle Road. I guess that is one thing about Ultra and Sengoku. Man, these two units are so close. You know, I'm actually, on the spot, I'm thinking about switching Ultra and Sengoku to two. I've got these guys so damn close. The Super Saiyan 3 category team is really good. Uh, experienced fighters, over in a flash, prepare for battle, limp break, and form. First Awaken, fierce battle. See, here's the thing. Bardock, I feel like on the Revived Warrior team, not really as great of a fit because of Angel, Gold, and Frieza. Uh, like, you're gonna end up with Angel, Gold, and Frieza on the same rotation with Bardock sometimes, and Frieza's going to, to, uh, limit how hard Super Saiyan 3 Bardock hits by lowering his attack. He's fantastic on the Pure Saiyan and Super Saiyan 3 team. You know what? On the fly, I'm actually switching. I got Super Saiyan 3 Bardock as 3 and Ultra Instant Goku as 2 for best TURs. Yeah, I do feel comfortable with that, because thinking about it, UI Goku is amazing on three categories. Bardock is amazing on two, and then very, very good on one. So that's kind of like a little bit of the advantage. The Super Saiyan 3 team and Realm of Gods team, I think, are kind of comparable. Many people consider the Super Saiyan 3 team the best team in the game because it is like the hardest hitting team in the game. But at the same time, it's not as tanky as other teams. Uh, you will take a lot more damage with the Super Saiyan 3 team than you will with other teams. Now... Can y'all guess who I have at number one? Maybe, maybe not. It's Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. <laughs> Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta just celebrated his one-year-old birthday. Now, I know a lot of people are probably not going to be happy with this. But hear me out. Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta has a 70% chance of evading and countering super attacks. That is... The single most broken ability in this game, I feel. He is an absolute game changer. One of the best defensive units in the game. If you've gone into Super Battle Road or Extreme Z Awakening, I don't, well, I don't, this Gogeta hasn't been relevant in any Extreme Z Awakening event yet, right? I don't think so. Uh, but he's amazing in Dokkan Battlefield. Uh, he just, he's good in so many different areas. He, his fusion team is amazing. There is a better leader now, LR Gogeta, but it doesn't knock Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta off the team. And if you didn't get lucky enough to pull LR Gogeta, you can run this guy as your leader and still bring a friend LR Gogeta, right? So this guy still has relevance as a leader, uh, even though there is a better uh, version of his leader out. He has an amazing link set, Super Saiyan, Kamehameha, Shocking Speed, Over in a Flash, GT, Fierce Battle, and Fuse Fighter. I would say, if they had given him Saiyan Roar over Kamehameha, I, like, this guy would be just so stupid. Like, so insanely OP. Like, that is the one thing they could have done. Because, like, the Big Bang Kamehameha, like, yeah, it's got Kamehameha in the name, but, like, you could have given him Saiyan Roar, like all, all the other Super Saiyan 4s do have. That would help out tremendously for the Shadow Dragon arc team. 
Uh, he does have the 150% 12 key multiplier. Uh, and that's that's about it. Like, he's just good. He greatly raises his attack and defense for one turn as well, which is a 50% buff. So, if he super attacks, after that, he will be able to tank. But really, for me, that 70% ability to counter supers is just, it's like, it, it's insane. Like, Super Saiyan 4 Goku, he only, him and Vegeta, I, they either have a 30% chance or a 25, I think it's a 25% chance that they have. It doesn't really activate often. Whereas Gogeta, for me, it's stunning when Gogeta does not counter super attacks. That's why I've got him number one. Let me know what you guys have in your list. We'll go over the list one more time. Uh, the new physical suit Android 17 as 10. We have physical Super Vegito as 9. We have tech Super Saiyan Blue Vegito as 8. <laughs> we got SCR Super Saiyan Rose as 7. Uh, we have uh, Ultra Full Power Super Saiyan 4 Goku as 6. We have Turles as 5. We got Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Vegeta as 4. We got Super Saiyan 3 Bardock as 3. Ultra Instinct Goku as 2. And Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta as 1. Thanks for watching, y'all. Have a good one. And I'll catch y'all next time.